right out of college I started working in youth ministry. And when I did, I immediately met this teenage couple. They were ninth graders and they'd been together for a little while. But they were one of those couples that you probably have seen before. They're together for a little while and then they break up. And then they get back together and then they break up. And when they're together, it's never really good. They fight all the time. They yell at each other in public. They flirt with other people. Uh, they talk bad about each other to their friends. It just, it's one of those things where you look at them and say, I don't even know why they're together. And eventually, after two years, this couple broke up. They, they broke up. And the reason they stayed together for as long as they did, there, there were a couple reasons actually, is one, it was their first relationship. And so they couldn't imagine breaking up with the first person they ever went out with. And another reason they stayed together is because they had crossed some physical lines that um, they never crossed with anybody before. So it was hard for them to imagine not being with this person. Even though things were so bad, they had this connection that almost couldn't be explained. And the reason they weren't supposed to be together and the reason they fought is because they, they were two different people. Uh, and in fact, one of them was pretty serious about their faith and the other one didn't care at all. And they kept going throughout this uh, process of breaking up and getting back together and breaking up and getting back together. And the reason they never really made it stick and the reason they couldn't stay together was because they were two different people. They weren't going in the same direction. They weren't committed to the same things. They, they weren't committed to their faith together. Now this is common for couples that you see all throughout high school. It's become so common that we probably don't even notice it anymore, but you can probably think of people like this. In fact, you may even be in one of these relationships. And so we've talked about how God wants us to be with people who are for the same things we are. We, he wants us to walk with wise people who push us towards Him. And so what we're going to do today is we're going to talk about in dating relationships how do I pick out somebody and make it stick? How do I make it work? Uh, how do I find somebody who's going to be about the same things that I am? The first thing we need to do is make sure you date a follower of Jesus. Now this seems pretty simple, but in fact it gets very tricky, especially around here, because we live in a town where 90% of the population, 90% of the people we know go to church. Now I'm not talking about dating somebody who just goes to church or just is in a small group because we know plenty of people who go to church but aren't serious about their faith, aren't committed to their faith. And we need to search out and seek for people who are serious about following Jesus with their life. Marco talked about this a couple weeks ago at D-Now. There's a big difference between belief and faith. We don't need to be connected to people who just believe in God. We need to be connected to people who live a life of faith. Now again, there's nothing wrong with hanging out with people who don't live a life of faith. There's nothing wrong with uh, hanging out with people who aren't Christians. But if we're going to be connected to a person in a dating relationship, they need to be somebody who says with their lives, I'm going to follow Jesus. Because if we're going to be about following Jesus in our lives, we want somebody who's going to walk with us in that journey. The second thing we need to do is define boundaries. Now this is kind of strange. Uh, if you're going to date somebody, you probably need to, pretty early on, talk about the things that you're willing to do physically and the things you're not willing to do physically. I, I know so many couples who decided very early on, they, they said to themselves, I'm not going to have sex or I'm not going to cross this line, I'm not going to do this. And for whatever reason, they compromised. And the reason they compromised is because they never told anybody else, this is what I'm not going to do. And this is strange, it's awkward, and I know it's weird. And most of you are thinking, I'll never do that. But we have to verbally declare what our intentions are. What are some things that we're not willing to do in our relationship so that we can stay dedicated to the cause of Christ in our lives, so that we can stay pure, so that we can stay connected to God in a way that doesn't separate us uh, or shame us. Do we need to define boundaries? Do we need to be open and honest with each other about what we expect to do and what we expect not to do? The third thing is this, spend time apart. It's very common for couples to spend so much time with each other that they lose sight of everything else. They almost get lost in each other. And again, there's nothing wrong with spending time going on dates and hanging out with each other. That's kind of the purpose. But I've seen so many couples who lose their identity and lose their individuality because all they do is spend time with each other. 
Spend time going to movies with friends. Spend time going to dinner with your family. Spend time apart from the other person that you're dating. Spend time alone. Uh, make sure that you stay connected to Christ in your own personal time. These are things that we've got to do if we're going to be committed to who God wants us to be. Um, you want to keep your identity. You, you want to keep your identity in Christ and not be so absorbed in the other person that you forget who you are. So it's important to spend time apart too. And lastly, talk about what God is teaching you. What have you been reading in the Bible lately? Is there something in your prayer time that's been impacting you? Is there a sermon that you heard that you really enjoyed? Is there something that God has been calling you to do differently with your life? How is God moving in your life? You need to be able to talk about those things. I can't tell you how many couples I know, and me personally, have been in relationships where I didn't feel like I could talk about those things. And we were two people who were supposed to be professing in Christ. When my wife and I first got together, one of the best things about our relationship, our dating relationship, was that we were able to pray for each other and talk about the things that we were learning individually. More than anything, we need to understand that all relationships are rooted in the love that Jesus Christ has for us. It is His love that brought Him to the cross. It is His love that died for us. And it is His love that saved us. And any type of relationships that we experience, dating relationships, friendships, family relationships that are good, are, are because of the things He has done for us in the first place. All relationships are rooted in Christ's love for us. He has been so good to us. So in your small groups, talk about these four things and talk about the love that unites all of us, the love of Jesus.